one of the, you could call it tragic thing, you could call it, God know what he's doing. Our mother had passed away, so Anthony had to come back from Iraq to, be, to attend our mother's funeral. But we lost our mother on April the 18th, 2003. Um, he came, you know, we were at the ceremony, you know, he was in good spirits, you know. And, you know, after the funeral was over, I got up, I fixed breakfast for everyone, and everyone was going back home, and I pulled Anthony to the side, and I said, Anthony, um, talk to me, because you can't sugarcoat stuff with me, because I'm in the Army, I know what goes on. And he was like, I said, well, don't you go out there doing things. I said, remember, you have a family. He said, well, I'm a soldier. I'm going to do what a soldier is supposed to do. And as he hugged me, all six foot, what, five, <laughs> he hugged me and whispered in my ear. He said to me, either way I come back, I'm going to come back a hero. Right. That's what he said. So I hugged him, and I told him to take care. I told him that we love him. He always said that he was not afraid, that he was a soldier. He knew that his family was going to take care of his family. So he knew that he didn't have nothing to worry about. Only thing he had to do was on his mission. One thing I want you to know about Anthony, when he was at Fort Hood, he was working communication with the general. He could have stayed there, but he always said that he wanted to be with his soldiers. And he fought and he had an interview with the first of the 44th, and he, and he went and he got assigned there. Because he said he didn't like being behind the scenes. He didn't like doing communications for the journal. You know, nothing against the general. He wanted to be out with his soldiers, and that's where he was happy. And the last email that he sent me when he was over there, he said that he was doing fine. And we were always joke. He's like, oh, I'm going to outrank you, big sis. But I'll come back. I'm going to be sorry, man, you won't have to bow down to me. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, right. But Anthony, Anthony was special. You know, he, he was a dedicated soldier. He did what he was supposed to do as any soldier because the world don't know what soldiers have to sacrifice. Oh, it's only like 10% of us, the families, the wives, the wives, they have to pick up and move. The children, they have to go to different schools. You know, we move, we do sacrifice, but the rest of the population, they really don't get it. You know, the, the ultimate sacrifice that we give to our country so that you can live the life that you want to live. And I'm very proud of, not my little brother, but my brother, Anthony. I'm proud that only in America can a child from Orangewood Drive <laughs> We have a building, you know, name after him. And we, as a family, we feel so proud. And I'm not going to talk too long because I have a lot. I, I can see my my siblings. They're packing me on the back. They're okay. Cut it short. Yeah. Um, but I just want to know. That's one heck of a speech out there. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jaquan Thompson, son of Anthony Thompson, as you can tell by our handsome faces. <laughs> I would like to thank every one of you for making this happen. My dad must have been one heck of a guy for him to be honored this way, and I'm eternally grateful. I think I speak on behalf of my whole family when I say, that we are eternally grateful and honored. I know I didn't get to spend that much time with my dad. I wish I did, I, but I was only four years old at the time. It was really hard for me when he died. Seeing everyone here today proves to me what I knew in my heart, that my dad is a great man. I'm proud that he's my dad, and I'm proud to be his son. I love you, Dad. Thank you.